I'm going home to my parents. Does anyone actually say this line? Until a short while ago, I thought so too. But I have already put up with enough to make these words sound like they're not enough. As I was packing up my belongings and leaving the house, my husband said, Hey, you are a stupid woman to the end. You forgot these important divorce papers. If you ever come near this house again, I won't hesitate to call the police. With these infuriating words, my husband half forcefully kicked me out of the house. After looking at the door, which had been shut vigorously for a while, this is the end of his life, isn't it? I muttered to myself and walked out lightly. My name is Kimmy, a 33-year-old office worker. I have been married for three years to my husband Dylan, whom I met through a friend. By the way, we don't have children yet, so we're renting and whenever our schedules match, we take a vacation and go away a little. I was happy enough with such a life. However, my husband seems to have changed and so my life has changed drastically. It was about a year and a half ago. The parent company of the company where my husband works asked my husband to join them. Before that, there was not much difference in our salaries, but since then, my husband's salary has increased significantly. Because of this, my husband became arrogant to me. He used to do the chores, but then, you're in charge of taking out the trash today, right? You forgot, so I rushed to take it out. He looked at me a little suspiciously and said, You know, I've been thinking for a while that it's not right for us to share the housework in the first place. I'm the one putting more money into the house, so you should take the initiative and do the house chores out of gratitude. He began to complain, saying as if something was wrong. He used to be a person who could honestly apologize when he forgot to take out the trash. I was so offended by his words that I said to him, Well, let me tell you something too. Dylan, just because you got a raise doesn't mean you have to behave like that. At my words, he let out a huff and said, I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm just saying I'm proud of me. Thanks to me, we were able to have this house, you know? You should realize how blessed you are. After saying this, my husband quickly went to take a bath. As my husband said, we have been living in a newly built house for a while now. But I didn't want a house like this. My workplace was too far away and I hated where the house stood in the first place. When I opened the curtains directly across the street stood the house where his parents lived. I looked at them and let out a deep sigh. This is just like living together with your in-laws, isn't it? I muttered to myself and closed the curtains with some force. The reason why this was happening was that it had been a while since my husband had started working for the parent company. Kimmy, I've decided to build a house. At the time, we were living in a two-bedroom apartment which was large enough for the two of us. It was close to the station and the rent was reasonable for the location which I liked. I had never heard of my husband wanting to build a home of his own, so I was surprised. My dad and the other guys told me that if I got a pay raise, I should definitely do that. I was beginning to think that was true and my parents were even going to put a down payment on a house. Furthermore, without even consulting me, he said that he and my parents-in-law had already gone to several construction companies for consultation. How could anyone hear such a thing and not be offended? What? Why are you making such an important decision without me? It's not like we're having a baby and it doesn't have to be right now. I looked at him in dismay and he said, Actually, my father has cancer. I just heard the other day and I'm his only son, so I want to live close by in case something happens to him. When someone says something like that to me, of course, I don't want to be the devil. I couldn't say anything strongly to him anymore. Even my mother-in-law, who usually never contacted me, said, We're getting old, aren't we? I would feel relieved and very happy if you and your husband lived nearby. She frequently contacted me like that. Incidentally, if you ask me if I like or dislike my relationship with my parents-in-law, I dislike them. They look down on people and make me feel very uncomfortable. My parents-in-law were opposed to our marriage at first. The reason was my family structure. My mother was a very toxic person. 
and I don't have a single good memory of her that I want to recall. After the divorce, I lived with my father, but my parents-in-law did not like that. Whatever your reasons were, you grew up with a single father, didn't you? If you have children in the future, will you be able to take care of them as a mother? My mother-in-law said this to me when we first met. At that time, my husband still has some common sense. He even told me that if I got scolded by my mother-in-law too much, we would cut off ties with her. However, when I mentioned the name of the company I worked for, her attitude changed completely. I work for a company that is not a major corporation but is well known locally. Perhaps because of this, I was paid about the same salary as my husband. I was quite disgusted by this attitude of my parents-in-law. But after that, they never nagged me about it. Still, when I visited my in-laws, Kimmy, I know you have a hard job, but isn't it time you started thinking about having children? You are over 30 years old, and when I was your age, I was doing my best to raise my kid. It was quite stressful because she would talk forever about things that I had trouble replying to. My father-in-law was a quiet man, but he had a way of assuming that housework was a woman's job. And if I tried to sit down at my parents-in-law's house for even a minute, he'd say, Hey, if you have time to relax, shouldn't you normally ask, is there anything I can do to help you? No woman should be so thoughtless. He said something incomprehensible to me as I looked at him with a dumbfounded look. There was no way I could get along with my parents-in-law like that, and of course, they continued to oppose the construction of the house. However, one thing led to another, and I decided to agree to the house. Of course, my husband and parents-in-law were delighted. And when the house was completed, my in-laws visited the house unannounced, as I had expected. It's nice to have a new house after all. It looks like you won't be using the rooms for the kids, so maybe we should sell the old house and make room for us. I listened with a wry smile to this nonsense. The wives in the neighborhood like to stand around and talk, and every morning when I go to work, a few of them get together for a little meeting. They greet me with smiles, but soon I could hear them whispering behind me. I'm sure she's having a hard time making the mortgage on their house. With those in-laws, I bet she's having a hard time. I heard them talking like that. My mother-in-law and everyone else definitely hate me, huh? I couldn't help but laugh. My husband and in-laws were taking advantage of the fact that I didn't say anything, and they were being rude more and more every day. Hey, hurry up and make dinner. Who do you think you owe your livelihood to? These words from my husband had become a daily routine. My parents-in-law would also bring up the down payment on the house. Please don't make Dylan do the housework. Thanks to Dylan and us, you have such a nice house. Don't you ever forget that. My mother-in-law said this to me over and over again as if it was her habit. One day, my husband forgot to take out the trash again. Not that he forgot, but it was completely on purpose. I told my husband, who had a blank expression on his face and was about to go to work, You're on garbage duty today, right? I called out to him, but my husband threw a shoehorn at me with a great force. You're the one who has to take out the trash. If you have a problem with it, you can get a divorce. My husband grinned at me and I simply said, Okay, then let's get a divorce. I'm going back to my parents' house. My husband's eyes widened for a moment, but then as if he had been waiting for me to say it, he said, You. You said it, okay? You can't take back your words now, can you? If that's the way you want to play it, get out of here right now. I ignored my husband, who was laughing hysterically, and packed up my belongings. My husband looked at me from behind with a smirk on his face. As I was about to leave the house, he pulled something out of his bag. Hey, you are a stupid woman to the end. You forgot the important divorce papers. If you come near this house from now on, I won't hesitate to call the police. With a triumphant look on his face, he handed me the signed divorce papers. Wow, you are very well prepared. And you look so happy. It's as if you've been waiting for this moment for a long time. 
my husband's words made me frown a little and he half forcefully kicked me out of the house. The door slammed shut behind him and I looked at it for a moment. This is the end of his life, huh? I muttered to myself and walked out lightly. It was about a month later, I returned to my parents' house and spent peaceful time with my father. One holiday morning, however, the intercom rang. I checked the monitor. Dad, they're here. From my words, my father strode to the front door. What do they want? So it's Dylan and his father and mother. Please come in. We don't want to stand around talking. The three of them stared at my father as he coldly told them to do so. When they entered the room and saw me. Kimmy, you've got to be kidding me. Dylan yelled at me. I responded. What are you talking about? Oh, maybe that thing has arrived by now? Well, you've done things that were way out of character, you know. It's not worth it if you don't at least pay me. He must have received the certified letter from me. I smiled, but my ex-family-in-law's faces were red. Dylan, my ex-husband, said to my father, Why didn't you tell me? As soon as the divorce was finalized, I received a relocation notice to a subsidiary company. My salary would go down considerably, and when I protested to my boss, your name came up. Don't you think it's very unprofessional to demote me for personal reasons out of your love for your daughter? Take responsibility and tell my boss to withdraw my relocation. My father sighed at my ex-husband, who was furious. You say that you are feeling held back because of your salary. Kimmy consulted with me about it before, you know. I thought a higher salary would boost your confidence, so it was I who introduced you to your boss. I kept quiet about it because I thought it would hurt your petty pride. I still regret it, because instead of building your self-confidence, you only became a monster. As my father had said, my ex-husband thought he was hired for his abilities, but it's actually not quite true. It was because of my father's verbal support. My father and my ex-husband's boss had been friends for many years, and when my father put in a word for him, the boss agreed to help. The fact that my ex-husband was approached by his boss, who had a high position in the company, seemed to have given him a lot of confidence. However, his confidence took a turn for the worse and he became overbearing at work as well. Even without my divorce, it was only a matter of time before he was transferred. He's a very loyal guy, so he was very concerned about me and my daughter. He was having a hard time getting rid of you. When I told him about my daughter's divorce, he was relieved. I feel deeply sorry that I introduced someone like you to him. When my ex-husband found out that I had actually introduced him to my father, he called me like crazy, but of course, I ignored all of them. I guess he got enough of me not answering his phone calls and thus came to protest in person. Of course, that's not all. My ex-mother-in-law was shaking and trembling. He said, compensation for emotional distress. Who do you think you are? You're overreacting. We will never pay you. I said to my ex-mother-in-law, who was ranting at me, It's not up to you to decide. If you have a problem with us, you should get a lawyer. You were intending to sell your old house and move in with us anyway, right? Why don't you pay me with that money? You even lied to me about having cancer so you could build that house for Lisa, didn't you? They were smiling at me, but now my in-law's face is turned pale. I had always wanted to see that on your faces, you know. Did you think I didn't notice anything? Don't underestimate me. When my ex-husband started saying he wanted to build a house, I felt a certain discomfort. My ex-husband, who until then had been indifferent about his appearance, suddenly became fashionable. I immediately had an intuition, and of course suspected him of cheating on me. I don't want to build a house where there are strange people in the neighborhood. That's why I've always been okay with renting. Now his words had become reality. Suddenly he started saying he wanted to build a house despite not wanting to previously. It's like he's asking me to doubt him. Around the same time, I started getting likes on my social media account from a woman I didn't know. This woman? She only likes the pictures with Dylan in them. 
feeling creeped out, I peeked into that person's social media account. I found that it was filled with photos of her with someone who appeared to be her boyfriend, although his back was turned to the camera. But no matter how I looked at them, the other person was my ex-husband. She wrote things like, I hope he leaves his wife soon. He was going to build a house for me. And all sorts of stuff that she fantasized about. The fact that she approached me suggests that she deliberately wanted to show me her social media account. I decided to fight looking at the social media account of this rather provocative woman named Lisa. I heard you got remarried. Congratulations. Oh, I see you're not with Lisa today, are you? Maybe she ran away. <laughs> Even though she was the one who started the fight with me. But it's no use running away. I did some research and it turns out that Lisa, the woman with whom he had an affair, is a childhood friend of my ex-husband's. And she seems to be very close to my ex-mother-in-law who had wanted her to marry my ex-husband for a long time. When Lisa, the cheating partner, quit her job and came back to her hometown, the two of them met up again for the first time in a long time. Lisa seemed quite taken with my ex-husband when she found out where he worked, and it turned out that she had been aggressively approaching him even though she knew he was married. It seems that Lisa was actually my ex-husband's first love, and the two of them quickly got in an affair. At that time, she still had her parents, and my ex-husband thought about quitting many times. He couldn't handle his problems, so what did he do? He talked to his parents, and his mother said, It's easy. Divorce Kimmy and marry Lisa. Of course, I'm against such a workaholic woman. She's not even pretty. But you're thinking that if she founds out, you'll have to pay alimony and all that, won't you? So, in that case... The result of their discussion was a plan to treat me excessively harshly and kick me out of the house can't believe that she was crazy enough to cooperate with her son instead of scolding him. I laughed at him because he seemed to really think that if I left the house voluntarily, alimony would be irrelevant. It was the cheater who wanted the house, and it was my former in-laws who advised him that the loan would surely be easier to pass during his marital relationship with me. Because if I kept living with them, they could always pick on me to get rid of me. I kept the recording of their outbursts in order to get a favorable divorce, which turned to be quite a lot. When it was time to get the divorce out of the way, I was told to leave, so I just left. I couldn't tell Lisa that I might be transferred, so I registered without telling her. But then she found out somehow, and so, come on, help me out. The mortgage, the alimony, there's no way I can pay them on my own salary. My ex-husband started crying pitifully. I looked at him with cold eyes. What are you talking about? We are strangers now. I was quite hurt, and you said a lot of terrible words to me. I still cry when I listen to the recording. Please pay me the alimony. Of course, I won't reduce it. As I stared at the three of them, my ex-mother-in-law said to me, Don't you have any humanity in you? all? Dylan is apologizing to you and you act like a big shot. That's why I didn't want him to be married to a woman who was raised by a single father. At this, I got furious. You think you can just say whatever you want? My father would force himself to go to work, even when he wasn't feeling well, and yet he always smiled so that I wouldn't worry. You don't know anything. I was so frustrated that tears involuntarily welled up in my eyes. As I cried, my father gently placed his hand on my shoulder. Kimmy, you don't have to cry for these people. Your future is bright. In comparison, what awaits these people is a path of destruction. Are we done? We and you guys are strangers. If you make any more noise, I will call the police. My ex-father-in-law stood up vigorously, as if he didn't want to go to the police. Don't make such a big deal about the police. We'll leave you now. He called out to them, saying, Come on, let's go. And left as if they were running away from something. Excuse us, he said. But they were the ones who came here out of the blue. What the heck was he saying? They were crazy until the end, huh? 
My father laughed when he said that. Later, I ran into one of the nosy neighbors again. I had a chance to ask them what they were up to. She told me that my ex husband and ex parents in law still live in that new house. Eventually, my ex husband was transferred. To pay off the mortgage and to make ends meet, even with my ex parents in law's pension, they seemed to be struggling. And to my surprise, my ex parents in law also started working. The house was built for Lisa, but she is not there. It seems that she gave up on my ex husband early after that and left quickly, leaving the divorce papers behind. She explained to her parents that after Dylan's divorce from me, she developed a romantic relationship with Dylan, who was heartbroken while spending time with him. I had sent a content certified letter to Lisa's parents as well, so everything came to light and her angry parents disowned her. I shuddered to think of the community of wives in the neighborhood who knew so much. Lisa, through her lawyer, brazenly demanded a reduction in the rent, but there was no way I would comply. I glanced at Lisa's social media account. All the photos had been erased except for a pitch black picture. She had only this to say, which was written there It wasn't supposed to be like this. She seems to be working from morning till night to pay off the debt she had incurred to pay my alimony. I have always believed that there is no such thing as happiness built on misery. That's because it will all come back one day. I want them to live the rest of their lives with regret. As for me, I am getting along well with my father at home. I apologized to him for coming back, but he said, What are you talking about? As long as you're laughing, dad is fine with that. I want you to be happy. That's all I ever wanted, before and even now. I was so happy to hear it that I cried. I'm so glad he is my father, and I softly laughed as I thought of this. <laughs>